In this video, we will be looking at compound interest. But first, how is compound interest different to simple interest? Let's quickly recap what you know about simple interest. If Sandro invests 8,000 Rand at 10% simple interest over three years, then after the first year, how much will he have? Well, every year he gets 10%, so his interest that he gets on the first year is 800 Rand. So that means at the end of this period, he will have 800 plus 8,000. So after the first year, he will have 8,800. How much interest does he get in the second year? Well, also just 800 Rand. So after the second year, he will have 8,800 plus another 800 Rand. And that gives us 9,600 Rand. And after the third year, well, now I will have another 800 Rand. You might remember that we could also just say 800 times 3 and add it on. So we can also do that method now. So this is going to be 10,400 Rand. Um, so the short way of doing this is by saying 8,000 times 10% times 3, because he gets the same amount every year for 3 years, and that gives me 2,400. And then if I add it onto his original investment, you will see that that also gives me 10,400 Rand. So that is simple interest. Compound interest, on the other hand, means that you get interest on interest. So let's make a quick note here. Interest on interest. So every year starts with a new amount that you invest. Uh, and therefore, it grows uh, exponentially. So let's have a look at this. Year one will look exactly the same. So Joy, if she also invests 8,000 Rand um, and she also gets 10%, she will also get 800 Rand after the first year. No difference. But now for the second year, she gets interest on whatever's in her account at the moment. And we know that now she has 8,800 Rand in her account. So she gets 10% on this amount, which is not 800 Rand, it is 880 Rand. Okay, add that on to what she invested. She now has an amount of 9,680 Rand. And now she gets 10% on this amount. So her interest is now 968 Rand. If we add this on, we will see that she ends up with 10,648 Rand, which is more than 10,400 Rand, meaning that if all the other numbers are the same, if I have the same investment amount and the same interest, annual interest, but the one is compounded and the one is simple, that compound interest will yield a bigger result after the time period. Let's look at another example and see if we can not perhaps write this a little bit shorter. So if Junior invests 13,000 Rand at 8% per annum over five years. Okay, stop here for a moment. Do you still remember how to increase an amount with 8%? Do you remember that I add 8 onto 100? So if you quickly want to check what this is. Let's make a little side note for ourselves. 13,000 multiplied by 108 over 100 gives me 14,040. So by doing 108, by saying 108 over 100, I'm just adding 8% on to 13%. Okay, but now remember that this happens over a five year period. And what we've done now is only for year one. So instead of writing it all underneath each other, getting an answer and doing it again, I can merely repeat this fraction five times. 
So my previous answer multiplied by 108 8 over 100 will give me the answer for year 2. Doing that again on that answer that I just got and you can press equal in between on your calculator if you are doing this will give me the answer for year 3. Doing it another time on my previous answer because remember it's interest on interest will give me the answer for year 4. And doing it one more time because Junior invests his money for five years will give me the final answer for year five. Typing this in on your calculator can be quite a lengthy process, but I'm hoping that by writing it in this way, it is a slightly shorter way of writing it at least. When you do all of this, you will get an answer of 19,101. And I'm going to write down all the decimals here just to remind you that you should always round off to two decimal places. So if I round off those 265 to two decimal places, it will going to be 27 cents. You could also be asked to calculate compound interest semi-annually. Semi-annually merely means that you get it interest twice a year or every six months. So we have to do a few teeny tiny calculations before we actually do our fraction calculations. So 9% per annum means that you will get half of that each time for the six monthly period. So you are going to get 4.5% for the first six months and 4.5% for the second six months. Also, if we get interest over a three-year period, how many six months are there in a three-year period? Well, for every year, there are two six months. That means in total, you will get interest six times. So I will have to multiply by six fractions of 104.5 over 100. If this becomes too big, remember that you can get an answer in between and then just continue from there. So let's try and write this um, process out. So Marcelo invests 50,000 Rand, quite a big amount, multiplied by 104.5 over 100, because remember we are increasing 50,000 by 4.5%. And this is the first time of this year. And for the next six months of this year, it is also 104.5. So now I've done it twice for the first year. Now let's do it for the next three years as well. So that's the first time for the second year and the second time for the second year. So twice for the second year. And we have to do it another two more times because it's twice in the last year as well. once, twice for the third year. Now let's type this whole long thing in on your calculator. You should be getting an answer of 65,113 and 0,0624 0, cents. Once again, you must remember to round off your decimals to two decimal places. So round it off, we would get 65,113 and 0, 01 cents. You could also be asked to do um, compound interest quarterly. So the question will normally give you the interest per annum and then says that it's compounded quarterly. So once again, we start by saying if I get 8% interest per year, then what will I get every quarter? So I have to split 8% up into four equal percentages 
and I hope this is easy enough and you can see that each period will be 2%. So for each quarter in a year, you're going to get 2% interest. Over a two-year period, how many quarters will I have? Well, in the first year, I will have four quarters. And in the second year, I will have four quarters. Meaning that over the two-year period, I will get eight um, there's eight quarters and every quarter I will get 2% interest. Let's write out this process. So Destiny invests 5,000 Rand. Increasing that with 2% means that I will say 102 over 100. But I will have to do this four times for the first year. So keep writing this out four times. And then I like to indicate that this was for year one. Now we're going to do this again for the second period. So if you're running out of space, you can always just write it in the next line for yourself. So multiplying by 102 over 100. And we're going to do this another four times. Once again, just a reminder that you can press equal along the way if your calculator seems like it's getting too full and you can't see everything on the screen anymore. Just remember um, that you've done so and how many you've typed in. So type in this whole long thing in on a calculator, what do we get? I hope that when you type this in, you also got 5,858 Rand and our decimal places are 296905. Always remember to round off to two decimal places. And I indicate that I round it off with a squiggle equal sign. So that gives me 5,858 and 30 cents because the 6 after the 29 makes the 29 go up to 30. The last way that we could be asked to do um, compound interest is when they ask it monthly. So if we need to split 6% interest per annum into 12 equal little payments, the quick way of doing this is just by saying 6% divided by 12 equal months and that gives me an answer of 0,5% interest per month. And now the time period is one and a half years. So over one and a half years, how many months do I have? Well, in the first year, I have 12 months. And in half a year, I will have six months. Meaning that altogether, I will get 18 months. So as you can see, this is going to be quite a lengthy process. We're going to try and write it out as short as possible for you. So 3,000 Rand. And we're going to multiply this by, and be careful now because this is a half. So it's 100.5 over 100. And let's repeat this for the first six months of the year. Um, I'm just gonna cut out this section, otherwise we're gonna take a lot of time to write it all out. So for you, it's gonna be uh, two ticks and everything's gonna be on the screen. For me, it's gonna be um, about two minutes. So see you back in two minutes. Yeah, I'm back, that took forever. So if you have to do it, I hope it takes you a bit quicker than it took me. And now we have to type this whole long thing in on our calculators. Remember to press equal signs in between as you go throughout this process. Uh, don't clear your screen, just keep on going with your fractions. And then you will find that our answer is 3,281,7868119. Once again, I need to round this off. So the sixth here is gonna make the 78 
79 cents. Now, for those of you that have changed recently to MathLit, you might be familiar with the compound interest formula. You are welcome to use this when typing it on your calculator, but unfortunately, you cannot write this method down. So for those of you that are familiar with it, I'm going to show you quickly how to do this. Um, but remember that it's not allowed to use this method in a test or an exam, but you're welcome to just check your answer by you doing it the short way. So here is the compound interest formula, and I'm going to use it with Tyrese's example. You might know that the compound interest formula is principal amount, open bracket, 1 plus interest percentage over 100 to the power of n. P is my principal amount, which in this case is 3,000 Rand. 1 is always 1. I've calculated that each uh, month I'll be getting 0.5% interest. So that is my interest over 100. And I've also determined that I do this for 18 months. So when you type this in on your calculator, you will get exactly the same amount that we obtained earlier. So if you do know the formula, it is a very nice way just to check if you didn't accidentally leave out one of your fractions during the long method. But once again, just a firm reminder that um, this method of using the compound interest formula is not always marked in your final exam. So do get into the habit of doing it the long way. Luckily, for doing it the long way, you will also be receiving a lot of marks for a compound interest question. And I hope that this wraps up all the things you need to know about compound interest.